Hi there, and welcome to another episode of the Silver Screen Show. Thanks for joining us once again. As usual, I'm joined by Alenia. Hi. Hi, and my name's Abu. I don't know if I introduce myself. I always <laughs> let the tag your, name, your name does it. The yeah, tag does yeah, it for it you. It feels weird introducing myself. I do it for <laughs> once. I've noticed I never actually do that. So and then somebody else is doing it. <laughs> exactly. <situations. laughs> right, um, before we go into our review, Alenia, you've had quite a busy week, right? And I kind of tell all for a bit <laughs> yeah so we didn't have a show last week instead uh i went to the premiere the uk premiere at fright fest of eat locals which is a british film it's got a massive british cast so you've got charlie cox daredevil daredevil <laughs> yeah exactly you've got Mackenzie crook from uh, pirates of the caribbean you've got people like eve miles and freema agumon and ruth jones and Nick crosby who are all on like massive British TV series mm. and then directing you've got Jason Fleming who was in like Lock, Stock, Snatch, uh, Extraordinary Gentleman, X-Men Ooh, Fast very Class. British movies. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> he told me he's been in upwards of like 130 movies Is and yeah and he was really nice, got to do an interview with him, interview with Annette Crosby. Yeah, um, we're going places, you know. Yeah, we're I know. Going, we're talking meeting, to actual people. Meeting <laughs> other bloggers, <laughs> yeah. met some really cool bloggers, um, uh, Natasha Atlas and Guy Jeffries. And, yeah, um, shout outs to these guys yeah shout out <laughs> to the guys and uh they did they did some reviews for us as well afterwards and it was a great movie like it's it's got up like a 1.6 million pound budget so wow. it's really low neymar makes it in like a day <laughs> i know <laughs> but it was fantastic and jason yeah. fleming was like I, I asked him how do you want people to take it and he's like it's not tchaikovsky <laughs> it's a million pound budget it is what it, it is. is what it is <laughs> like <laughs> hopefully people like it and we really liked it the, the crowd loved it they were cheering and laughing and having a great time really, how did it feel to interview like a director i'm thinking it's the first time you've interviewed yeah someone like that. <laughs> it was it was kind of scary i was um a little bit nervous he seemed like a laid-back kind of guy you know? he was really nice mm. i literally walked up to him and was like hi my name's elenia from silver screen <laughs> show can I interview you? He's like, yeah, 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 I'll be yeah. there. I'll be there in five minutes. Ah, oh, lovely. And then afterwards we had a chat. I was like, I'm sorry, but I was really nervous because I think you're really cool. And he was like, oh, you're so sweet. And then we just chatted so there for a couple of So he didn't get triggered like the Kong director and went on a math. You knew what Oh, no, no, no. He, he knows. You're not afraid he's going to do one of those. If then. you're making a film about vampires in a country farmhouse with the Vatican special forces, Damn you know one. it's going to be just a little Vatican bit silly, a bit ridiculous. <laughs> the Vatican special forces. Yeah, the, the army is Fascinating. sent by the vatican to kill the vampires <laughs> and yeah tony curran's in it he's really good there's a new kid like he's been in some small films billy crook and he was really funny dexter fletcher is amazing as well and he was taking like silly uh, selfies with us as well in the little yeah. meeting group so yeah that was really cool so uh, quickly uh, before we want so when is this out or is it out already or um, I think it's having like small releases oh, okay. and then DVD release. Okay, okay fair enough. It's, being, like, it's not a massive yeah. thing. Oh, so, it's on Neymar's daily salary. Can't, no. can't do much. Um, <laughs> that's great. And um, the yeah. full reviews on YouTube, on our channel. So yeah. if you want to check it out. I'll write a blog one as a well. Proper review. <laughs> a proper review. <laughs> and I have the time. Because also, I went to see Terminator 2 in 3D. Best so ever. Fantastic Still movie. And think, watching it, <laughs> I was like, this this film so many more layers and then i laughed at myself it's just I'm hilarious. <laughs> but um you yeah, know it was really good and then uh, like everyone in the cinema had clearly seen it all before and they were la like, oh, no, be like oh my days yeah they're like pre-laughing at the, the jokes t1000 dies what <laughs> t8 no. was a good guy <laughs> um yeah and it was really great and it just watching it and being like this was made made in 91 still stands and it up. still yeah. stands up against anything that's coming out now. so many levels as well so many and, and see what it's become Genesis is rubbish. Oh my god. Let's it's it's it, it's kind of like with the the Star Wars prequel trilogy. Yeah. You just uh, don't talk about Genesis. Let's not let's not talk about Genesis or Genesis no. whatever. Terminator 2 is great. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Terminator who 1 hasn't seen it. I mean, you say no, no, who, I, can't. I know people who haven't seen it. What's wrong with them? I know. I never see it. Oh well, that's another whole different topic. Yeah. And if you haven't seen it. What the pff, oh what no, no, it's it's like Alien we compared it to. Alien oh. and Aliens. Like the first one's a horror, the second mm. one's like a bit funnier, a bit more of a yeah. thriller, and then the rest are bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Fastbender Covenant starring Fastbender, yeah. he saves the world from Fastbender. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it is pretty yeah. much just him. Fastbender starring Fastbender. <laughs> so right, so let's move on to the crux of the show. We've got three reviews coming up. Yeah. We'll try and run through them as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So first up is um, Logan Lucky. So this came out 
couple of weeks. I think last week. Last week, yeah. So brief recap: Logan Lucky stars is a story about um, the Logan twins, Channing Tatum and Adam Driver. Their names I can't recall right now. So we'll just call them the Logan brothers. <laughs> <was> paying attention. <laughs> yeah, well, they call them Logan brothers. <laughs> okay. So they're down on their luck. Um, so with the help of their family and a few dodgy friends, they want to steal from the Charlotte Raceway. So they have the biggest, I think, the NASCAR race at the Charlotte Speedway, and that's their goal to go and steal some money. Mm -hmm. So that's a basic brief um, background, and it's directed yeah. by um, Steven Soderbergh, who's done a few other heist movies like Ocean's Eleven. Oh, okay. So I thought, you know what? Yeah. That's not bad. You know, I do like a heist movie. I think before we go into it, like heist movies in general, is one of my favorite probably genres. I mean, okay. Mission Impossible, love that. Inception is more a than Marvel. Yeah, Mission Impossible have the whole heist things, you know, yeah. Ocean's Eleven's great, Inception's one massive heist film. Yeah. So personally, like, heist movies are probably one of my, not in one of my more interesting type of films I like. So whenever I see one of these come out, I'm like, gotta Got see it, gotta <laughs> see it. So I've seen this one, so obviously you want to ask me the questions and we'll yeah. lead on it um, like that. Can we just call it Hot Logan Brother and Other Logan Brother? <laughs> no, that is one question, I'm like, are these guys related? <laughs> it's like, it's a bit, I don't want to be harsh, but it's like Channing Tatum and then Adam Brown, like, are they, are they, um, are they, they, I don't know, in the trailer everyone came across as a little dumb, is, no, is they're, that a They're thing? not dumb, they're kind of got, they're, you can tell they're not like, they're not Harvard educated, they just live in the, they live in, was it South Carolina or, or Virginia somewhere, they, mm. you know, they got the, they live in that type of southern, deep Amer south. yeah, deep south, yeah, so they're doing, you know, local manual labour jobs, bartendering jobs, sister works in the barbers. Mm. So, yeah, they're not done. But um, they, I've got to ask, yeah. Daniel Craig, yeah. how is he? Yeah, I was going to say that one of the best parts of the movie is Daniel Craig because he's just literally having a blast here. Yeah. He's just like, you know, I mean, we know him from the Bond movies and it's just so intense and tight. And, you know, you just, that's the Craig you usually see now, isn't it? But mm -hmm. this one, he's just literally letting free. He's loving it. It's just like, he's probably just the best part of the movie for sure. Yeah, he comes across yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah, he's playing like <laughs> the crazy explosives guy. So, yeah. you know, he's got, he's got to be a you know, substance to work with. So, you know, the role is criminal who likes explosives. So, you know, there's a lot of craziness to work with there. Yeah. So, and bringing on, as you said, you know, they're not the smartest of people, but what works there is like the brothers are very, you feel for them on an emotional level. You can see they're struggling. Mm. They have, they're down on their luck. You know, the brothers, one of the brothers have an arm, the other brother has a limp, which causes him to lose his job, which is the reason why he goes on a heist. Wait, he loses his job because he has a limp? Due to insurance, the reason, like they say, oh, he didn't say he had a limp, uh. you know, and, you know, America's got this weird okay. insurance stuff, you know, they say it's a pre-existing condition, he never mentioned it, oh, so he loses right. his job, stuff like that. And then all, all the members of their family have had some sort of bad luck, hence why the lucky Logan train comes in. So, like, the best part is, like, you know, I really feel for the first, like, the main two characters. Like, if you've got a reason to pull for them, you mm -hmm. kind of want them to succeed. And if, if you don't want them to succeed, then you never, you don't really feel the film. Yeah. Because I think if I bring it back to Triple Eight, which came out last year, um, the high, it was a heist movie, I watched it. Yeah. But you just did not like any of the characters there, and you just wanted them all to die. And when they all die, like, good, you deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you're all bad people, there's no reason. Yeah, they're heist, you kind of want them to succeed in Exactly. The and they, they're always kind of put in a way where, they have some good intentions. Well, in Triple Eight, they're all bad people and they all died. Like, good, good. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. So, I mean, that worked really well in this film. The two, Channing Tatum was really well as a, like, it's a different role for him. He's not playing the usual good looking, muscle bound hero. He's more like just a dad. He's just, he's just <laughs> a dad, you know, who's looking, working hard to look after his, um, you know, daughter who only sees because he's divorced, you know, every now and again. Mm. So emotionally it works well, what else do I have here? The humour, it's actually quite a funny film. It does look funny. <laughs> it does, I don't want to ruin any of the jokes, but I mean, there is like one, I mean, one of them, it's based on Game of Thrones basically, so if you follow Game of Thrones, um. you'll love it. I'm not sure how well that joke will age, to be honest, yeah. <laughs> when you watch it like 10 years down the road, if it's still being watched 10 years down the road. <laughs> but I mean, it's got a few scenes and Daniel Craig's got a few lines, for sure, he really mm. has the best lines and parts of the movie. So all of that. I loved um, hating or downsides. Yeah, what are your what are your negative negatives about it? Negatives. I think the main one is um, the villain. So I mean, there really isn't a pure villain in this. No. So I mean, you got the speedway which where they're trying to um, break into, but they're never really ever portrayed as an evil corporation that you want to steal from. And like the villain is supposed to be Seth MacFarlane's character, who is some, <laughs> like, he's like a cocky um, businessman. Yeah. And like we meet him first scene, he's in the bar and starts a fight. I'm rich, look how rich I am, I don't know who I am. Mm. That kind of smug guy and like, 
But even then, he gets a bit of his comeuppance, but he's never really like part of the whole plot of the film. It just kind of happens, some bad things happen to him and kind of feel, oh, that happened. Yeah. But it wasn't really like a main villain. Like, he didn't feel satisfied when his thing happened. So I think that's where the film kind of lacked <coughs> a main villain. So it kind of affected. Yeah. You need a bit of like a contrast between yeah. the people who you're mm. rooting for to go and like, finish the like, heist and then mm. the people like that Ocean's Ele- Like Ocean's Eleven, like he had um, the casino owner. So you just didn't like the guy. So he was the villain. They're robbing him. Yeah. So you come from, yeah, I want to see this guy go down. Whereas this one, there really wasn't a villain per se. It's just like, we want the money and it's just like, yeah. And it's this guy's money and he's... This guy's a bit of an idiot. Yeah, let's laugh yeah. at him. I mean, yeah, he plays a clown, but he never really is bad enough for them to do this whole operation in so i think that was the biggest i mean negative i had it's like he's never had a strong antagonist and probably the one other thing is it really drags on a lot yeah like the second half not like well, the not half third the last third is just totally dragged on yeah like so they do all the heist all that business is done the last 20 minutes is just basically an investigation following the fbi mm. and it just adds nothing to the storyline yeah. It's, just, it's, it's like just, the, it's, they, they win, they go with the money and, mm-hmm. and done. Whatever That's happens, yes. they do the well, heist, the heist is happens, over, they show how they do it. You know? yeah. They have the usual, you know, pattern. But then the last one is like an investigation part. And it's just like, they introduced Hilary Swank as one of the like, a really aggressive uh, police officers. Okay. Like, she's really intense <laughs> for some reason. And she's in it and like, and they just pad it on for the last 20 minutes. And like, this adds nothing. It adds nothing to the storyline. Mm. Nothing new, no new revelations come out of it. And the only thing they really do it for is to bait an opener, bait a sequel, sorry. Yeah. It's kind of like, ah, oh, do you really just do this to put her in a potential second film? Yeah. Because they, they could have ended it as it was and they could have still been a... It does seem like a standalone movie. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it could have worked. I mean, if, they could have worked a sequel into it regardless. Mm. They could just see something popped up, but they didn't really need to add all this in it. And I think that really pushes along a bit too much. Because yeah. it comes about two hours and it's not really a film that's you know, a two hour epic. No. But I think the, you know, the good sides outweigh the negatives. It's, 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 a, it's hilarious. It's just fun. It's, yeah. it's, um, the characters are all charming. Even, you know, even Adam Driver, he, he, even, he's, he has one off of the entire film. <laughs> and he just, he's, he's a bit, he's not all day in the head. Yeah. So he's very, you know, he kind of, ah, oh, this guy, I feel for this guy. I hope he you know, works out for him. Yeah. Same with Channing Tatum. All the characters work well. It's funny. But so, three word review? Three word review. Charming and fun. Charming definitely check fun. it out. If you love a heist film, check it out, definitely. And I think it's worth just for Daniel Craig's performance. Yeah. It's utterly just insane. to see him doing something a little bit yeah. different than Bond. Instead of just, just sulking, like, I want to kill myself being Bond. 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 <laughs> James Bond. <laughs> and being angry. And being an angry Bond. Yeah, he just shows you, you know, he can do a lot more than just what he's known for. Yeah. So definitely check it out. Cool. All right. So part two. We've been-